Azim is a long time Jaden Sancho admirer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Man. No, we're happy. We're happy it didn't work out for you, guys. <laughs> I have to say that. No, we're really, uh, we're really pleased. Uh, we're really pleased that uh, the, your club hasn't had enough money. To <laughs> more, so, uh. Without further ado, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is a this is a gentleman who is a former player for Borussia Dortmund. He's their ambassador now. Uh, he's been a Bundesliga, or still is a Bundesliga commentator. He has his own show called Over Meets on on the Bundesliga channel. Um, one Bundesliga two time. Yes, and uh, if you take his initials of Patrick Overmail uh, and t- turn it around, he's OP. So please, <laughs> yeah. with a big Patrick OP, please welcome Mr. Patrick Overmail. Yes. Hey. Hello. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. What what does OP mean? Why are you laughing about that? <laughs> um, so OP uh, in live streaming terms, this is what young people do these days. Uh, OP means overpowered, uh, and it's, it's just a gaming term. Yeah, it's a gaming term, and people are very excited uh, whenever they they like something or they're excited about something. They just say that thing ah. OP. So okay. right now it's Patrick like it. OP. Then I yeah. like it. <laughs> And uh, you found this out just two weeks after we did, so uh, (laughs) it's good. (laughs) No, it's very good. Good to see you guys. Yes. So, uh, Patrick, of course, we've there's been a lot of talk, and we just found out recently that uh, Borussia Dortmund is has tied up with an ISL club. It's something that we're very excited about, Hyderabad FC. Um, now, one of the things that we wonder about is like we've had this happen in the past. They say that you know a particular club has tied up with Mm -hmm. the European club. Uh, so, what does that entail usually? Like, what does that mean? I mean, first of all, uh, I think both clubs can participate uh, from it or can benefit from it. Um, it's an exchange of experience uh, um, from our expertise in building building a youth development, for example, because that's something where, where Hyderabad is looking uh to, to go into and to build up on. And that's yeah. something that Borussia Dortmund does. So there, there will be a big exchange in, in that expertise. And on the other hand, obviously, uh, we are interested in, in learning about the, the Indian football culture and how to engage uh, even more in that. We've been, we've been searching for a partner in, in, in Indian football and an Indian club to do with um, for quite some, some time. And uh, finally, we have found somebody who was wearing the, the same colors. And, uh, oh. that's, that's how we so that was the only criteria. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mostly it's about exchanging experience and, and expertise and knowledge about uh, how things are, are done on, on both sides. And I think that's not a one-way street, it's a, it's a two-way street. Okay, so okay. since you, you mentioned that, you know, we could have some players coming from Dortmund to the ISL. Do you think we could have, like, maybe Sancho or Erling Haaland sent on loan for a few, for a few months? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll figure out how, how to do that. I mean, just give me a little bit of time, maybe 200 million euros, and then I, I, I will be <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. What I really wanted you to say is, no, actually, we're thinking of sending Sancho to Manchester United. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, heard, really. I heard that Azim is, is, uh, is currently wearing black and yellow. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of faking because usually he wears like uh, red, red and black shirts, right? Uh, no, this, yeah. is his, this is his. This uh, is my local uh, team jersey, though. This is his local okay. team jersey. Then so, you yeah. excused. Yeah. <laughs> so there's... Uh, uh, so uh, you were supposed to come to the ISL and and, and I, I we know you came here, you visited Kochi and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you excited? Like what happened? I mean, is there a like how did how did that happen in the first place? Because uh, it was almost at the end of of of, of your Dortmund career before you yeah. uh, sort of came here. Uh, and then uh, so what happened? Like how, how, were you excited and things like that? Yeah, I was excited. Actually, it was it was bad timing because I'm I'm a guy. I, I always look for new uh, new challenges in life and, and new experiences also. And I came to my career in Germany came to an end, or my contract at least in Dortmund did. And um, I was thinking about what to do next and where to go. And I had this uh, this this offer. This uh, I was in contact with uh, people from the ISL back then. Um, and I was about to go. Actually, I was really, I was really, really eager to go. I wanted to to have that experience. It's only a short time. It's it's just a couple of months, right? The, yes, how yes, the season yes, is yes. running, and it, it sounded all very interesting and good. My only problem was it was uh, 2013, and the, the league got postponed. 
for for a year. Right. I don't know exactly why, but it didn't start in 2013 as it first was planned. So it got postponed for a year. And after yeah. that year, I haven't had played in the Bundesliga for quite some time. For a year then, mm-hmm. okay. and suddenly, my uh, my 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 name wasn't as big enough as. Uh, as I thought it was to to still have that <laughs> offer on the table, so the, finally the, the the offer wasn't there anymore. But I would have loved to to go there, and I found out uh, due to my travels with Borussia Dortmund as an ambassador to India that I really love the country, the the uh, culture, the the tradition that you see, all of what the country has to offer, especially the food, of course. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, won't be so much of a fan of the beer, but uh, considering your German, so. <laughs> yeah, no, beer beer wise, I'm pretty good here in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example of like so uh, the the uh, I think 2011 or no sorry 2013 the 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 Champions League final with between uh, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern yeah. Munich. Um, so during that time, so as a comedian, I was touring and I was in a state called Gujarat, uh, where th- they don't serve alcohol at all in that state. And it was a huge, huge deal for me to be watching a Champions League final in a pub, uh, drinking cold <laughs> coffee. So, <laughs> yeah, that must be tough. We, yeah, yeah we know now Patrick, even if he is planning to rejoin the ISL, there's no way he's coming to a Gujarat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, moving on. This is something we're all very excited to talk to you about. Uh, your, you've played under uh, Jurgen Klopp, uh, and I'm yeah. sure and won titles. Uh, and won titles. titles, and I'm, and, and uh, mm-hmm. also, I mean, I, he was there when you moved to Dortmund. Uh, no, actually, oh. actually, we we uh, we joined the club together. So it was yeah. the same oh. same time, the same summer. We both uh, joined the club, but it w- he was he was already signed as a coach. And then engaged in signing me as well. Uh, nice. So, but it was the same the same time that we both started at, at BVB. And um, yeah, I have to say it, he was he was actually back then not the kind of coach as you all or as we all know him now. Um, he hasn't had that kind of reputation. He was quite famous in Germany for mm. covering uh, the the German uh, World Cup or the World Cup in Germany in 2006 um, as a TV uh, host. Oh, wow. And uh, he was really funny, and he wow. was, of course, he was an expert in what he was talking about. But he, more than that, he was really entertaining. Yeah. So that that was uh, what he was really known for. And he was involved, uh, or before he came to Dortmund, he was with the club uh, Mainz, Mainz uh, 05. Right. Yes, yeah. His uh, his club where he used to play before he turned into a coach. And so you you wouldn't have him as as a number or of a, of a top ten coach back then. But he was interesting, uh, an interesting person. Uh, the club Borussia Dortmund to me was always interesting. I followed a, a dear friend of mine who, who joined the club in '99, so I was already involved a little bit uh, with, with uh, Borussia Dortmund, and I really liked the club, the stadium. Obviously, mm-hmm. playing there as an opponent was always something special. But uh, overall, it was this, um, yeah, the whole mixture of the club because at the time the club was in 13th place, so not really doing well in the league. Um, I would say business-wise, the club just survived a, a real, a real, uh, um, a real valley in their in their history, where they almost went bankrupt in 2005, four or five, I think, uh, and they just recovered from that. So it wasn't really attractive by that. But the whole, the 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 total package of Jurgen Klopp as a young, um, entertaining and and ambitious coach, and the club of Borussia Dortmund with that stadium and the fans they have. That was really interesting for me to to join the club because I was coming from Werder Bremen, what was then what Borussia Dortmund is is now yeah. the, the number one contender to Bayern mm-hmm. for the title. Right. All right. Uh, uh, we're very. Ask we you, want to we want to uh, geek out a little bit. Sorry, Kato, go. Uh, Sorry. I just <laughs> the thing that I wanted to ask you was like you mentioned that um, Klopp is is a you know he's a funny personality. He's a, and we've seen him in all the press conferences. He's got a very gregarious yeah. uh, outlook. Is he that way with the players as well? When when you're yeah. under him, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's Jurgen Klopp basically every day. Of course, he has days <laughs> where he's more quiet, but um, most of the time he's joking. He's uh, making funny notes on the side. He wow. he was always like in the middle of of all his players, so he was not just hiding away in his uh, own locker room. He was joining right. the the uh, the team's locker room. 
he wanted to be engaged. He wanted to know what's going on, feel the vibe of the of the guys, and he was very talkative. So he was very verbal, and he was uh, he was always um, always there, and uh, it was usually really funny. He could he could be pushing you to the extreme as well, and he could <laughs> yeah, be uh, a little let's say a little pain uh, in the <laughs> stomach. Um, yeah. But uh, on a on a daily basis, he was exactly as he is in most of his uh, press conferences. All yeah. right. Just the last question about club before we move on. Uh, Azim, do you want to do you want Yeah, I did want. So me? since you mentioned press, uh, I wanted to know so what was it like playing in a gig in press <laughs> system? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was something different. I mean, uh, the style he wanted to play with his team was uh, involving a lot, uh, a lot of running and a lot of uh, high intense uh, work on the pitch, and that was something new because before that, uh, of course, there were phases during a game where you would do that, but not as a basic part of your of your strategy. Uh, strategy. So that was new. That was intense, and that uh, led ultimately to me retiring a little earlier. Than <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's great. Because I got over overtaken, over overlapped by uh, young guys like Lukas Piszczek at that time, yes. who was uh, a couple of years, like four years uh, younger, no, five years younger than me, and had more gas in the tank. So he, <laughs> he overtook and, and kicked me out of the team. But um, no, but it was an, a nice approach, a new approach, something new that the league hasn't seen uh, up till then. And it, it led to instant success, actually. So um, that was really cool to be part of, to be part of that new style of, of football uh, yeah. that was played in the Bundesliga. And he obviously was uh, was the inventor, or at least uh, the one who, who who brought it to the Bundesliga. Right. Okay. Okay. So since uh, we were talking about, so uh, Jurgen Klopp was one of the managers involved uh, in signing you. Um, and so we play a lot of football manager, uh, the, the video <laughs> game, and we actually right. found your scouting you. sheet uh, from the time that you, you were signed. Uh, and actually, to okay. be fair, I'm just going to put this on screen share. Yeah, so more these are these are your more ratings more. out of 20. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, 20 is the, the top? Yeah. 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 Oh, then they're much too low. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Long throws. 18. That's that's fair. That's okay. That's fair. Heading, okay. heading. I would say 15 is correct because offensively, I wasn't that sharp defensively. I think at, there was a time where there was not really a lot of people better than me. Dribbling yeah. 14. That's okay. Finishing. I don't think I was that bad at finishing. <laughs> Wait, how, how many Eight. goals did you score? <laughs> Eight, but come on! I was a, I was a fullback, all right? Yeah, that's so, not good. But, <laughs> that's not bad. That's, that's an, let's 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 skip over to the mental part, but the, because that's really interesting. Aggression, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't an aggressive guy. I was always nice. Anticipation, I would say I was better than that because mm -hmm. um, I was really lazy. But because of my anticipation, I was able you to make up to for cover that. that. Yeah, I could make okay. up for that. Bravery, sixteen. Yeah, concentration is maybe a little high. I, will, <laughs> I tell you that. I, okay. I was not really the, the most focused guy on the pitch, to be honest. Decisions. Uh, I'm not. I'm not comfortable with decisions I, because I don't think I made a, a lot of wrong decisions. Well, I mean, there was that one cup final, though. <laughs> it wasn't even a final. It was on the way. Oh, semi final. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we, we 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 talk on that later. Don't don't. Uh, <laughs> Don't give uh, me that Patrick, yet. I just want to come back to concentration. Like when your mind wanders on the football pitch, what do you think of? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, uh, yeah. there were times when when all the things were were really going well. I was on the pitch already trying to figure out to which club I would go after the game <laughs> to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I mean I was young and we had a good time. We had we had pretty much uh, success from from the very first day in Dortmund. So the first year I would even consider as a success even though we finished six and just shy of the international ranks but still it was a good development from what was uh, before in, in, at Borussia Dortmund and the next season we we, we finished in five so we, we we made it to the Europe League and then obviously two titles uh, yeah. a double mm -hmm. and the Champions League final so there was a, a success uh, all along the way and then an a, a up building and a building up to that and I was really enjoying that. That was always my character. I had to enjoy life. I couldn't be too focused. I couldn't be too sincere and too determined. Um, that was my way of approaching things. And so I always, yeah, my mind started to wonder a lot. And 
okay, where can I have a nice dinner before I go to what bar <laughs> and uh, end up in what club? So that that's the usual uh, second Patrick, half of a successful game. That's yeah. so nice to know that at every level people are thinking the same things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever your job is. <laughs> yeah. So what did you what do you think of uh, Borussia Dortmund's uh, season this year? Like, what is there a, is there an overall analysis and how did that? I mean the the last season or yeah, the, last season. the last the season, season that and maybe season. what 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 will even sort of come like where do you yeah think? I mean it still it was a successful season in my opinion I mean uh, you, since uh, Lucia Faber took over we we uh, twice finished as as second place in the league uh, the one year we were really close up to the very last yeah. game uh, uh, it was possible for us to to become champion um, last season it wasn't that close but still. Uh, we we secured the second place, which is a successful finish after all. Of course, everybody at Borussia Dortmund, all the fans, but the players too, and the the club itself is longing and 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 hoping to win another title because it's been since 2017, I guess, the yeah. last cup that we mm-hmm. won. Um, so it's been a while, and it would be nice to to do that. But you have to 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 admit that uh, Bayern did a fantastic job. In the yeah, by years. buying everybody, uh, yeah, <laughs> by buying a lot of people, yeah, that's buying true. Munich. I mean, but uh, to, yeah, to, buy Munich. Your, to, to, <laughs> to buy and yeah, that's that's an analogy. That's nice. That's, that's beautiful. Thing. So the one question, and it's got to do with mentality and focus and, and and things like that. Apart from all this transfer rumors and stuff, where where we're not going to, since you've already made your point on how Sancho is <laughs> not going anywhere. Uh, this. Uh, this, uh, you, you know, you you've suffered an injury and 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 mm. play and stayed out of it for a while, right? Um, mm. How difficult is it? Like, what do you have to do as a player? Because I mean, Azim plays football. Both Kautuk and I have played football in school, and now we're not in the yeah. shape to play football. But yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> what does it take mentally to perform at that level? And once you're injured, I'm, I'm sure it breaks your spirit. Uh, you know, so how do you how do you come out of that? Like, what what does it take once? Like, you know, when you get better and you start practicing a little bit, and you're mm-hmm. not at your best, obviously. So, yeah. how, how, what's the physical versus mental battle, and how do you get over that? Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to say, playing professional football is a mental thing. It's not about uh, being being physical, able to do that, because many thousands of people would be able to physically to to perform on on that kind of level bringing the speed the endurance and all that but having like the right mindset mentally being able to take all that pressure out of the picture and just do what you love that's that's the most important thing so mentally is uh, ment- the mental part of the game is very very important to to go uh, to the pro levels dealing with injuries is um, maybe one of the biggest parts of that mental part of the game um, injuries and being uh, not put into the first 11 probably because those yeah. two things you have to overcome and survive and just ignore in, in, turn, uh, in, in so, so you can go on playing and perform to the best level. When you're injured, um, there are different approaches. I mean, when, when, when it's obviously a long-term injury, uh, that's, that's really hard and that, that really breaks you for some time yeah. but the, the question is how do you come back from that I always thought that it, it would give me an opportunity to work on something I wasn't really good in my opinion really good before so let's give you an example my first big injury I was still playing for Werder Bremen and it, they told me it would take about two or three months and I said okay um, when when will I be able to run and how long before I can join the team in practice and they told me that the stretch would be about yeah about six to eight weeks. So I said, at least six to eight weeks where I can at least run, but not training with the team, I would use to build up my stamina, my endurance, right. because it wasn't really perfect. Another injury that would even take longer, I learned to to use my left foot proper. So I always give, gave myself uh, mm-hmm. a challenge to develop a new uh, expertise, a new something to, or to, to, to become better at something yeah, that right, wasn't yeah. as good before. So I always, gave myself a task otherwise i would have just sat there watched the other guys play on the different pitch yeah. and and thinking about oh i can't be there i have to be here and i right. I, I think that would have led to uh, even longer time in rehab and maybe to maybe to some periods where i was uh, would would maybe thinking about giving up because i had back to back injuries yeah. in, in my career and people know that so 
I had to to keep my mind busy, to keep my body busy, of course, but to give my mind something to work on, to forget that I'm not I, I'm not able to do what I that's, would love to do. That's an extremely so, interesting approach. Yeah, that, I mean, even if you are laid off at work, that could be something that you can sort of like you know work on a yeah. skill. Uh, that, yeah, that you exactly. Can. All right, we have a quick fun thing, which is what we want to do before we go to the audience questions. Uh, okay. Azim has some rapid fire questions. Yes, this is the, the standard right. talk show cliche of rapid fire <laughs> questions. <laughs> that should be the name Shoot. of the section. Yeah, the standard <laughs> talk show cliche. Done. That'll be the super over here. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, okay. Quickly, uh, so I think this would be an obvious one. Best manager that you've worked under? Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp, okay. Um, the best away dressing room? Oh, uh, <laughs> I I can't say the one, but it's actually quite good. But I won't say it. But let's say <laughs> Fallfish Stuttgart. Let's say Fallfish. Okay, nice, uh, so nice, we already uh, know the other one. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But they actually, they, they yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, who's the best player you've ever played with? With. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Oh, it's a close race. I would say it's it's a three-way race. I would say okay. Diego, Mesut Özil, and Mario Götze. Okay. Three. Wow, that's oh, pretty skill, cool. Skill, skill. Yeah. Oh, and I, yeah. I mean, these are maybe the most famous nights. I played with Sebastian Deisler in the national team as well, and at right. that time he was. Like, and it was incredible. awesome to see what he was uh, able to do, but he his career didn't last long after that and it's really long while back so i would say diego mesut ozil and mario Götze, those three okay uh, mm-hmm. all right uh one player who you hated coming up against <laughs> because of what what because he was so good or because i yeah, yeah just be- oh well, both whichever one <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh so the, the a player i really kind of both hated and loved to play against was Ronaldinho because oh, it was his prime at Barcelona back then before Messi before all the other guys really came up and he was just that good and he it, he came over the left wing I was right back and we just yeah yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> tough to play against him you couldn't really look good playing against yeah. him but I love this kind of challenges so kind of both hated and loved it because I knew I was I would look embarrassed from time to time but on the other hand, that's what you play that game for, to play against the best. Yeah. Right. How okay. do you prepare before you take on Ronaldinho? Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. What goes through your head? <laughs> uh, a, lot of, a lot of spinning, so you get used to, to turning and <laughs> dizzy too much, you know? <laughs> Just you, know you, can really pre- you can, yeah, you can okay. really prepare uh, for players like this because they just do whatever they want to do. They go left, right, up, under you, and you don't <laughs> exactly know what they're doing. Yeah, they're yeah. so fast, so you okay. have to bring your A game and hope for a good day. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is the most hostile away crowd that you faced? Galatasaray. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously uh, the the one in the derbies. Uh, that's yeah. that's an easy one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it uh, won't get any hostile. And then I really hated that stadium and 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 <laughs> the the fans at the time. I I can appreciate a good atmosphere and aggressive atmosphere, but nah, that was just. Yeah. Uh, which which one would this be? Uh, which one is the uh, would which which club would the worst? Ah, basic, it's Dortmund uh, when we one? played at, at Schalke. Okay, uh, Schalke. 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 Okay. 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 All right. And uh, All final right. one, uh, your most embarrassing moment on the field? Probably, you guys mentioned it earlier, probably yeah. <laughs> uh, during the cup uh, run that we had in 2012 when I was uh, entering the pitch and leaving it after 24 minutes or so. I, I, was, I don't know. I don't remember, actually. I don't recall. <laughs> to plug the book? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yellow yeah, bring it up. Red card. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Carter. Thank you. Uh, yellow, yellow red card. Way too early. I gave my my team a really hard time, but that made maybe not only that game, but that whole uh, cup run really special. And in the end, we ended up winning the title. So yes, it it was a really special cup season. But uh, yeah, that game I would um, erase if I could and or play it again. Okay. Is it true that you broke your hand in frustration afterwards? It is true that I broke my hand, but it was not in, uh, involved in what was happened off the pitch. It was uh, on the pitch rather, okay. and it was not as a bad uh, broken bone as as many might think. It was more like a little sting in, in the in the in the in the wrist, and I I just found out really after that game. But the, the, because I was kicking doors and kicking, uh, <laughs> uh, um, let's say, 
a lot of things in in the locker room after I got sent off. They imagined that I uh, hit uh, <laughs> right. my my wrist and broke my wrist doing that, but I didn't. It was on the pitch. Okay. That's I just one, fi- <laughs> one final add-on to that. I find it amazing. So you said that the entire team after the match went to McDonald's. Yes. So this is something that baffles me. Like, and it's it's weird because we don't understand this. Are like as a professional footballer, are you allowed to eat junk food? Like, is that a thing that's allowed? <laughs> Listen, back then we uh, it was a little different than it is nowadays. We there wasn't really a, a, a nutrition uh, expert with the team right. back then. Uh, the only food we be, uh, we had, let's say, on a on a training day between two practices. We would get the most delicious pasta with cream in it and, and all that. So not stuff you would think that professional right. footballers should eat in <laughs> in between practice sessions. Right? Yeah. So uh, it was kind of easy. And after this cup game, it was in the middle of the night. It was a it was a night game, so right. it must have been after one o'clock uh, uh, at night already. And um, Jurgen Klopp didn't really care about what was uh, <laughs> what, what, what we were having. It actually, was the first to order. So uh, right. he didn't mind. And back then, it was a little more easy. I think you you couldn't have done it with, uh, let's say, Thomas Tuchel as a coach because right. he was really into nutritioning and stuff. So that wouldn't 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 happen. But Jurgen Klopp was uh, was kind of kind of easy. Why one McDonald's player's favorite coach now. I can totally. Uh... <laughs> okay, thank you for watching that video. Please remember to what are the things you have to do? You have to like. Uh, you have to comment. I mean, actually, don't comment. Who cares? Subscribe no, to the no, channel. If you com- no, no, but if you comment, it's advantageous because traction increases. Okay, so you should comment. You should share with people who enjoy this kind of content. And of course, subscribe to the channel. This is my channel. Subscribe to Neville's channel, uh, which is linked yes. in the description. Uh, subscribe. Don't subscribe to Kothuk's channel. He didn't come to record this video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, this channel, we do 442. I do a bunch of random streams and maybe stand up sometime soon. Uh, and this similar stuff also happens on Neville's channel. Including Stream for Sanity and a special 442 something is going to happen. Oh, it's happening. Kya yes. Superb. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Thank you for watching. And remember, like, share, subscribe, comment and other things as well. Okay, bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye.